Hello, and welcome to the Waukee United Methodist Church podcast. We hope you enjoy this week's sermon. Please stick around at the end for more information on where to find us and the blessing on Sunday. This morning's scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 21. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Thank you, Dennis, for bringing us the gospel this morning and for uh, the wonderful prayer and just the worship leadership, the praise team and the choirs. It's, it's, it's been just beautiful. You can feel the Holy Spirit here this morning. And now let's turn to God's word. Uh, well done. Enter into the joy of your master. You know, this is, uh, as we've been referencing here, this is All Saints Sunday. And um, something we need to remember right, right away. We, we gather to remember uh, those who have gone on before us. We, uh, we think of, a lot of people have the kind of the, the misconception that a saint is, is someone who has done something so wonderful for the kingdom of God. They have impacted, you know, the kingdom of the world so much for Christ that they have received this special status. However, the, the bulk of the New Testament holds up again and again and again in all the letters of, uh, of uh, the apostles that, that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ and who has, has followed him throughout their life is a saint. And so we gather today to, to recognize and remember and give thanks for uh, those followers of Jesus Christ um, that have gone on before us to their eternal glory, but also to remind ourselves that we are, we are saints and that we have been called to, to live out uh, our life in Christ. So, you know, the, the picture here that, uh, that you see up on the first day in heaven, you notice it's kind of the same, uh, the artist drew the same uh, kind of body and just kind of changed the color uh, of, for, for, for the guy there, but the three women have all the same exact uh, shirts and uh, kind of the same color shirts, and the only thing that's changed is the face. So kind of, I want you to, re- want to visualize, you know, all of our faces are, are meant to be there too as, as Jesus embraces us and welcomes us. Into, uh, into our eternal glory on that day. But um, getting to that day, let's talk about that. You know, there's a famous story uh, often told about the, a great uh, Methodist uh, pastor and missionary, Henry Clay Morrison, who uh, served uh, the Lord with his wife in Africa for over 40 years. Don, I should have asked you if any relation there. I'm, I'm <laughs> he, I, I looked him up on Google. He's originally from Tennessee, born in 1842, lived to about the 1930s here. but. Um, but uh, Henry and his wife uh, served for, for almost four decades over in, in Africa. And at the end of their ministry, they came back to the United States uh, on a ship, and Henry Morrison began wondering out loud to his wife, are we going to be remembered, you know, when, when, we, when, we, when we get back to the U.S.? Well, unknown to the, to the missionary couple, President Teddy Roosevelt was on that same big ship that was coming back, and uh, he had gone to Africa on a hunting trip. So when the ship uh, kind of pulled into New York Harbor, Morrison looked to see if anyone, you know, had come to, uh, to welcome he and his wife, wife home. You know, was there going to be a, little, a party there, banners and bands? Like, and sure enough, thousands of people were there, you know, on the deck, just cheering. And there were, there were big banners and a band playing and, uh, you know, everything. Banners saying, welcome home. And uh, Henry and his wife were so excited uh, about the crowds of people that they, you know, they thought were obviously there to, to welcome them home. But when they finally got down the gangplank, you know, with their luggage and everything, they realized that most of the people were already gone. You know, the party had broken up and people were kind of leaving. And then they were told that all the people had come to welcome President Teddy Roosevelt. So Henry Morrison and his wife went to the the little hotel room that the missionary board had had, uh, kind of reserved for them, kind of with a heavy heart. He was was a little, little disappointed. And as he sat there on the bed, uh, he wrote that he asked his wife, uh, he said, Grace, I just don't understand. 
for 40 years, we poured our lives into ministry and service for God's kingdom. And yet here we come back to America and not a single soul comes out to welcome us home, right? And his wife came over and sat down next to him and, she, and he, he writes that he, she put her arm around his shoulder and she comforted him with words that he said he would never forget. She told him, Henry, you've forgotten something. We're not home yet. Reverend Morrison wanted to hear the words of the master in Jesus' parable that Dennis read for us. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And friends, those are words that, that you and I, that all of us, uh, who, who, you know, who, who have given our life to Christ, we hope to, we long to, we look forward to hearing from our Heavenly Father. A day when we are welcomed home with a celebration of peace and love and joy because we're going to live forever in God's full presence. But until that day, we live in a world where tomorrow exists somewhere between the give us today our daily bread of the Lord's Prayer and the thy kingdom come petition of that prayer. And it's, it's critically important, it's vital that you and I see the day of our, days of our lives in this world as just as much God's time as the eschaton, as the, as the end time for us. That is, we can each be involved with the stewardship of God's Spirit living within us. The, the growing of God's kingdom that we find ourselves to be a part of wherever we're at until that ultimate tomorrow comes. We can each help another person or persons to know the experience of God's love living in their midst through the way we live and invest our lives. You know, over the years now, I, I know I've told you a hundred times about Helper's High, right, you know? Uh, but the University of Michigan's Research Center uh, study on American health found that more than any other activity, doing regular volunteer work dramatically uh, increases a person's life expectancy. It's more important than jogging or aerobics or even oat bran, right? Help somebody else. That is, for Christians, Show someone Christ-like servant love, and you will live a longer, happier life. You will have more vitality, more energy, more zest for life than those who don't. Study after study shows it to be true. And we know that as Christians, we're wired for this stuff. We are wired by our Creator to be givers, to be helpers, to be encouragers, to be dryers of tears. We have the power of God's Holy Spirit living within us, working within us, empowering us to make us God's increasers. Increasers of love and peace and hope and joy and new life in the world. You know, Jesus compared the kingdom of God and its growth, its increase, to a wise house manager, okay, who brings out of his, his master's storehouse, treasures of old, and, both old and new. And, and it enriches the kingdom and the people in the kingdom. I'll give you some examples of how that happened just recently. Yesterday, our confirmation class took all of the in-kind expressions of God's love over to Greenfield United Methodist Church as part of the Thanksgiving in gather. Okay, and we want to thank uh, Jim Gearhart and um, Randy Olson and Jen Berger for, for driving those kids over there and for toting all that stuff over. Well, here's the thing. Speaking of this, bringing things out of the storehouse, uh, you know, new and old, we had all of the current boxes of uh, hygiene kits and school kits and health kits all loaded up. And then somehow somebody remembered that there were some tr old treasures still down in the custodial closet. There were 10 flood buckets that you had so generously given to help put together, I, I would say a year ago. And we had just put them in the storehouse down there because we hadn't got them over to the, the depot to take them, take them down by the cutoff. You, your love was still coming in after that cutoff ended. And so the youth went down there and pulled them out of the storehouse and somehow, uh, you know, uh, uh, Randy and, and Jim and, and uh, Jen moved stuff around and got those, those 10 five-gallon buckets loaded too and took them over there. And that increased, it basically doubled our talents like, uh, like the gospel lesson that Dennis read. 
They, made, they went from two talents, you know, two more talents because our remittance form went, jumped from like $900 to almost $1,800 when we added the value of those, those 10 buckets. I'll give you another example, the bazaar. Today, you know, Trudy gave you a personal invitation here to that. Now, about everybody here, I would imagine, has got some, a few dollars in their pockets. And you could take those dollars right after the service is over, and you could go out to any one of a dozens of uh, restaurants and take your, take your family out to eat there. Or you could take that same money and you could double your talents for the kingdom, okay? By going downstairs and having some uh, turkey noodles, going to the bazaar, turkey and noodles at the bazaar. Because then the dollars that you give towards that, that dinner are going to be given right back again to even more ministry that Trudy talked about, you know, the charities. So you're doubling your talents, doubling the increase. I don't know, I could go on and on. Church ball tonight. Now, we're, we're excited, like Dennis said, uh, Brian Crone, uh, really appreciate his spearheading that and others. He had a team with him that got that going last year. And uh, if you looked at your little trifold stewardship uh, brochure that you probably got, uh, probably received here in the last day or two, you saw, you know, the, a, a group of people that enjoyed that. And you could come tonight yourself. Or by making the easiest invitation to an awesome fellowship event, you could double your talents, okay? Double the talents that, the, that God has entrusted with you and invite a friend, you know? Call up a coworker, inv a classmate, you know? Text a classmate, come on over and meet at Timberline. It's a way of increasing, you know, and uh, the, the, the talents, doubling the talents that the Lord has entrusted to us. And you know, doing, doing those kind of things, living that kind of lifestyle, that makes us all saints, all right? If we allow it, if we allow ourselves to live that lifestyle. There's an ancient story called The Servant of the Kingdom. It's about a man who is a, a king's castle servant. Well, one day he meets a genie, you know, the story goes, and the genie gives him one wish, but he warns this guy to be careful how he uses it. Well, the man doesn't even wait. <laughs> he says, I know what I want. I want other people to wait on me, like I've been waiting on everybody else, for others to serve me hand and foot. And so, you know, Genie grants his wish, and, and for a while, he, he loves it. Things go swell. But over the days and the weeks, the, uh, the luster kind of wears off. He gets tired of people catering to his every whim. He gets bored. And finally, after three long months, he goes looking for the genie. And he says, Genie, I, I can't stand it anymore. I want to go back to serving others. Man, I'd rather be in hell than live like this. And the genie says to him, where do you think you've been for the last 90 days? <laughs> so, friends, our Lord Jesus said that he came not to be served, but to serve. So may you and I find ever new ways and seek ever new opportunities to show God's love to others in the way and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know about you, but it just doesn't feel like All Saints Day unless we somehow hear that high and assuring promise of new and eternal life that waits to welcome us found in the book of Revelations. You know what I'm talking about, Revelations 21, three through five. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things will have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Friends, I want you to let God's own words of assurance relieve you this morning, free you and encourage you about what is in store for your life. Let them give you a daily sense of hope and joy because they're meant to. Like, live like today, like you're home already, okay? Like you've been welcomed home. Like you've heard the words, well done, enter into the joy of your master. Because there's something about being accepted, isn't there? It's so affirming, so encouraging, so motivated, 
motivating. I mean, it's life-giving to know the encouraging and inspiring assurance that when we die, we know that we're wanted, that we're accepted, and that we will be welcomed, that, that we know where we're going to and, 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 and to whom we're going. To live eternally with the Lord of life and love who has called us all through the gospel, who has enlightened us with his gifts, and who has sanctified and kept us in the one true faith. Okay, I don't want you to let go of that wonderful thought of Revelations 21, but I want you to consider another thought, a final thought from a, a different chapter in that same book of John's vi apocalyptic vision. Pastor, professor, and, and author Joseph Jeter Jr. comments on this passage of, from Revelations chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, which the, the passage is this. I looked, and there was a black horse, and I heard what seemed to be a voice, only a quart of wheat for a day's pay, but do not damage the olive oil and the wine. Jeter remembers back to 1988. He said he heard it on the news. And many of you might remember that year and what it was like up here in Iowa and in, in the Midwest, or, and it was Nebraska, Illinois, I think Indiana, Ohio. Leslie and I happened to be living in Florida at that time, so we don't remember, but apparently the drought in the midsection up here in the Midwest was so disastrous for so many farmers. But it had ironically resulted in a vintage year for grape growers. Jeter said his mind ran to a similar situation in the passage from Revelations, a scene where the black horse of famine comes to measure out in teaspoons what was left of the precious grain, while indicating that there was just this, this plentitude of wine. And a lot of Bible scholars who have studied this time period believe that the scripture was based on the real life, historically documented situation in the Roman Empire during the reign of the uh, Emperor Domitian, when there actually was a severe grain famine coupled with a bumper crop, grape harvest and wine. Like the story out of the Midwest, you know, here in our Midwest in, back in 1988, the wheat and the corn and the barley failed during that year in the first century, while the vineyards were overflowing. Where am I going with this? Well, Jeter offers us the notion that this situation produced back then, and it produces now, the strange situation of a shortage of a necessity, bread, and the abundance of a luxury, wine. He says when he thought about this in terms of the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, he was intrigued by the notion that the bread that we break and share represents a necessity, and that the cup we share represents a luxury. Because Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross is like that. In Christ's life and death, we find the necessities of life, such as faith, and grace, forgiveness, and love. And because of his death and resurrection, we're also given the luxuries of joy and peace to carry us through life. So we come to this table on All Saints Sunday to remember, to celebrate, and to give thanks for everything that Jesus Christ has done for us, providing us with the necessities and the luxuries of the community of faith, which we're all in today right now, and of the saints that have gone before us, of the saints we remember and give thanks for today because they were our family. And in, many and in many instances, they provided for us at one time in our lives the things necessary for us to live, to grow, to mature, to come to faith, to become independent. Later in their lives, after we were grown, they provided us with a luxury, a luxury of their wisdom, their warmth, their counsel, their faith, their continued presence in our lives, and their never-ending love for us. So friends, on this All Saints Day, 
as we prepare to come to the table of our Lord, may we remember, may we rejoice, and may we dedicate ourselves to sharing this faith, the faith of our fathers, our mothers, the faith of our sons and daughters, the faith of the saints of God, alive today on earth or alive in heaven. But let us dedicate ourselves to sharing this faith with others through the daily living of our lives, using and increasing the resources that God has entrusted to us. And let us all look forward to that day when you and I are finally home and we hear the blessed words, well done, well done, my good and faithful one. Enter into the joy of your master. Amen. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. We hope you enjoyed it. We have two services each week, an 8.30 traditional service and a 10 a.m. contemporary service. You can find out more information at walkiechurch.org. We hope to see you soon. Now on to the benediction. Gracious God, we thank you for once again giving yourself to us through this holy mystery. And now we pray as the saints in the world throughout all time on this day that you would send us out into the world to give ourselves to others for the sake of and in the name of and for the advancement and increase of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen.